This Hallelujah. is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, we are in worship. We are in worship. In the name of Jesus, we are under the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit by way of our praise team this morning. In the name of Jesus, whenever the praise team is ready, they shall go forth. Amen. 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 Rachel. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that it's so easy to love when we're in, in Jesus' will? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise in the building. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. And what happens as a result of it? It makes it easy to love. Amen. Amen. Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. So easy. So easy. Easy to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. So easy. So easy. Easy to love. Easy to love. The Jesus. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. So easy. So easy. Easy, easy to love. The joy in my heart. The joy in my heart, love the joy in your heart, the joy in my heart, love the joy in your heart, so easy, so easy, so easy, easy, easy to love. Put a smile on your face. A smile on your face, love the smile on your face, the smile on your face, love the smile on your face, so easy, so easy, so easy, easy, easy to love. Smile on my face, love the smile on your face. Smile on my face, love the smile on your face. So easy, so easy, so easy. Easy to love, easy to love. All right, back to the top. The Jesus in me. Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So easy, so easy, so easy, easy to love. Love in my heart. Love in my heart, love the love in your heart, the love in my heart, 
Let's love in your heart so easy. So easy. So easy. So easy. Easy to love. My face, love the smile on your face. The smile on my face, love the smile on your face. So easy, so easy, so easy. Easy to love, easy to love. How many know that the word says, and they'll know that we are Christians? by our love and they'll know that we are his by our love amen and they'll know that we are christians and they'll know that we are christians by our love and they'll know we are Christians by our love, 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 by our are Christians by our love, by our love, by our love, that we are Christians by our love, by our love, by our love, know that we are Christians by our love, by our love, by our love, by tell him I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you care for me in such a special way and what that care and what that love was when he died for us on the cross over 2,000 years ago amen can we give the Lord a praise for that hallelujah yes Lord that's why we ought to give him our heart our mind our soul our strength our spirit because he did that for us. He paid the ultimate price. Yes, yes. We don't have to sacrifice bulls. And we don't have to sacrifice lambs anymore. We don't have to give a grain offering anymore. Because he, he, he took an ultimate atonement for our sins. So that's why we what? That's why we praise you. That's why we lift you up. That's why we do what we magnify. We make your name large in the, in the earth. Okay? Hallelujah. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way, that's why I praise you, I lift you up. And I'll magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. 
I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you, church. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, my heart, my heart, my mind. My soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, give it your heart, your mind, your soul. Oh, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you, Lord. Oh, you paid. Yes, you did, Lord, on Calvary for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why. Praise you, Lord, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Oh, that's why. Thank you, Jesus, because oh, yeah, on Calvary, way back yeah, Lord, I want to thank you 2,000 years for dying for me, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. I lift you up, then I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, yes, it is, Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Every day of my life, Lord, I want to thank you. That is why my heart, my heart is filled. That's why. That's why, why my, my heart, heart is filled. Oh, 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 oh. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I praise you, Lord. I lift my hands to you, Jesus. 
Cause that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, we love God. We praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, and thou should not go to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, but joy, unspeakable joy, cometh in the morning. I wonder who in here knows that joy will come in the morning. I know you're going through something right now. I know you're dealing with some pain. I know you're dealing with some challenges. I know you don't know if you're coming or going. But the Bible makes a promise. The Bible makes it clear. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy, joy, unspeakable joy, joy will surely come in the morning in the name of Jesus. That's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Put your hands together for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, from whom all blessings flow. We thank God for our praise team in the name of Jesus. They may find rest in their seats. They may find rest in their seats. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. We are praising. We are magnifying. We are lifting up. We are edifying. We are finding how marvelous it is to praise the Lord. We are reminding ourselves that it is our reasonable service. Or as we sing and pray unto the Lord, we are reminding ourselves that our God is a great God and we serve an awesome God. And that it's, it's the least we could do. And that is to use our spiritual gifts to raise praises unto God the Father Almighty. Oh, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ from whom all blessings flow, and for whom each and every one of us owe a great debt of gratitude to the Son and to the Father and to the Holy Ghost. But we are gathered here this morning. I welcome all members, friends, and special guests on this morning, those who are present in the sanctuary, those who are making their way and those who have joined us on the World Wide Web. You know, just 10, 20 years ago, all this technology we have today did not exist. But we thank God for this available technology and the movement of the Spirit and the kingdom of God that allows this church, that allows this blessed and consecrated ministry to speak to any and all across the world. Amen. So we welcome you on the World Wide Web, on our website, www.newhopecmechurch.com, where you will find multiple links, including our live stream link at the top right-hand corner. You will also find links to giving, to online giving. We want to thank you in advance for any seed that you have sown into this ministry and into the kingdom of God. 
we continue to praise and worship our Lord and Savior for all that he has done for us. But again, this is the day. Oh, this is the day. This is a mighty day. This is an awesome day. It's not only the day that the Lord has made, but it's a special day. It's a day that we are honoring our women. It's a day that we are recognizing our missionaries. Let's put our hands together for that. <clears throat> for this is our installment. This is our offering unto the Lord for our annual Women's Day celebration here at New Hope and also combined with our hard-working missionaries in this church and across our Zion. So we thank God for a special day. The sun is shining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, yes, Roman, we are suffering from cabin fever in the name of Jesus. We are anxious to get out and play. Even when you are 40 or older, you want to be like a child and get out on the playground and, and, and swing on the swings and walk along the lake and, and the like. So we, are, we thank God. And that's why I like Part of me likes living in the Midwest and in Chicago because we have four seasons and in one week, if not one day, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we starting testimonies already. Amen. That's, that's how desperate we are. We just shouting out. Yes, from, from wherever the Holy Spirit leads us. But, but what am I saying? When you live in the Midwest... You have four seasons, and you know that there is a God. You know that there is a God because he got us through a brutal winter. And, and we are able to honor and praise him on a, on a sunny Sunday afternoon to let us know that he is still with us. But my brothers and sisters, I want to welcome all friends and special guests in the name of Jesus. We have a few individuals who have joined us in the sanctuary on this morning. Amen. We have Sister uh, Nancy Robeson, one of our own, who is here, and, and, and her daughter is here. I know she's no stranger to New Hope. Amen. So welcome back home. Amen. And she's got a a handsome young man sitting next to her. Amen. He's looking to the left and right. He's like, Who's he talking about? Amen. That's my friend and my buddy that I met at the ball in the name of Jesus. So we thank God that all of you were able to come this morning. But let us continue in worship. And let me be transparent that it is Women's Day. Uh, I take ownership of the fact that as the pastor and shepherd of this house, I did not readily identify a, uh, a woman worship leader, but... I take pride in the fact that I'm a renaissance man here in the 21st century. Amen. Oh, I got one amen in the name of Jesus, and I'm proud. I'm proud to be able to stand here as your pastor and represent this great day and these great women in this ministry. So we praise God for that in the name of Jesus. But, but prior to beginning worship, Let's see, Mrs. Betty Smith, her hands are full with my godson right now. I do want to recognize uh, 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 the presence of my godson in the name of Jesus, BJ, and, and all his Thomas trains. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But, uh, but the Holy Spirit did ask me to, to take the microphone to Miss Betty Smith at the time of prayer so that she can bless this house and bless these great women of God. Would that be all right? In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Mama never denies me. Brian, Brian, uh, mama never denies me. I'm one of her own, amen. Praise the Lord. But let us look in our bulletin on this morning. Let us officially call our service into worship. In the name of Jesus, I shall read as the leader. You shall read as the people. And we shall finish all together. Stand to your feet if you can in reverence for the Lord. As newborn babes, 
desire this sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby together. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious together ye also as lively stones are built upon a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God but Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning. Blessed assurance. Oh, that's Beverly and I's favorite song. Hymn number 27, we know it so well. Blessed assurance, you know it. Sing it loud and proud in the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it is now time for our affirmation of faith, which can be found on the inside front cover of your sentinel, if not by other electronic means within our church. New Hope friends and special guests, in whom and what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Praise the Lord.
might be. Might. Shall we pray? Dear gracious and eternal God, our Father, we just come this morning, God. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for being our provider, our protector. We thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit that you sent to comfort us in our time of need, God. Father, you are truly my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I thank you, God, for being the very strength of my life, Lord. Of whom should I be afraid? And, Lord, we just thank you this morning for each one of us that are gathered here today. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a mind to come out and serve your people, God. And we ask, Father, that you come and that you be in our midst, dear God, that you give us a clean heart and renew a bright spirit within each and every one of us, dear God, and help us, Lord, to learn how to serve and please thee every day of our lives, Lord. Thank you for traveling mercies, and thank you, God, for health and sunshine dear God and father we thank you most of all God for teaching us how to love one another and we ask God that you continue to teach us to pray and you teach us to pray as you taught your disciples to pray Lord let us pray it together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. As we are preparing to receive our choir, uh, I'm not sure if it's the, okay, it's the children in the name of Jesus. Uh, as they are making their way, I do want to acknowledge and thank um, uh, Alva and Wanda in particular for coming out to Freeport on Friday night. Let's give them a clap, amen. In addition, of course, to my wife and my children, amen, amen. praise the Lord, uh, for coming out and supporting their pastor in Freeport on Friday night. We had a Holy Ghost good time in revival. Uh, it, was, it was appropriate that the first two nights of that revival were preached by our very own Reverend Stanley Evans, amen. And I was given the privilege and the honor to be the anchor on the third and final night of revival. And oh, what a great time we had in the name of Jesus. So I wanted to recognize that before I forgot in the name, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want us to be encouraged and receive our children on this morning. Just prior to them singing, later on during either testimony or just after the sermon, I, I think I'll ask her to do it after testimony. Uh, yes, our dear little Jayla, she brought her, she brought her fiddle today, amen otherwise known as her violin, and she's gonna bless us today with two songs on her violin at, during testimony. Yes. Say what? Yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, nothing like children. 
Praise God. Let us receive you now, our children. Praise the Lord.
Put your hands together. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, out of the mouths of babes. Out of the mouths of babes. We thank God and praise God. That is our future. It is not easy to stand before anybody and exert your spiritual gifts. Suzanne does such a great job with our children. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we thank God for our children and and particularly my little chirrups. I was sitting there thinking, as the old saying goes, voices and that only a mother and father could love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. But that's where it all begins. It's good to expose our children so that they overcome fear of public speaking because so many adults grow up and have fear of speaking in front of individuals and families. So between church and school and home, we need to encourage our children to do as much public speaking as possible. Hallelujah. And we're training up leaders. We're tra you know, President Obama cannot be president if he was not given a chance as a child to speak in front of his peers. Amen. So and we're building up church leaders and world leaders. But open your Bibles, if you will, uh, to the King James Version. Psalm 31, Psalm 31 for our responsive reading. We're going to read verses 1 through 5, and then verse 15 and 16, Psalm 31, 1 through 5, verse 15 through 16. When you have it, stand to your feet in reverence for God. It's not too much to ask to stand. It's interesting, we'll stand in line for concerts. We'll stand in line for movies. We'll stand in line for the latest toy. But, but when the preacher says to stand for the word of God, I wonder if you do it willingly or begrudgingly. Psalm 31, 1 through 5, King James. I should read verse 1. Let us alternate to the end. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness together. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily, for thou may strong rock for our house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. And to the hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth, verse 15. Together my times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Together, 16, make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Gloria Patri. Hallelujah, you may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior. It is now time for our New Testament reading. Some may be looking in the pulpit and saying, well, Pastor, you have a very capable woman in the pulpit with you who could be your worship leader, but it is by design, if you have not figured it out, it is by design that I am allowing her to rest and consecrate herself because she will be bringing the word sooner than later. Amen. For it is Women's Day, so she has the mighty task of bringing the word forth. 
Let us look at the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. I'll be coming out of the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible on this morning. Again, John 14, 1 through 14. The Word of God reads as such. <clears throat> Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Oh, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, oh, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our God and Father up above. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I wonder if you just heard what Jesus said. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Well, we come to the Father quite often with many requests. And the Father comes to us with request in kind. Our Lord asks us to be obedient. Our Lord asks us to do his will. And it is our will and our obedience to give back to the Lord. To give back to God what belongs to him. For the Lord our God gives us over 100% of him every single moment of our lives. Oh, but yet he's given us the greatest deal in mankind. Many human beings will require that if I give you 100%, I want 100% back. And if you have a loan out on the house or a car, there are banks that will charge you interest. And therefore, you got to give back not only a hundred, but a little bit more. And when I say a little bit, I really mean a lot. But our father, as our officers make their way, all he asks for is 10%. 10% of what you bring into your home. 10% of the 100% that God has blessed you. For whatever you have, God has given you your time, talent, and your resources. Follow the directions of the ushers at this time. 
come down and give your sacrifices over to God. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Hallelujah in the name. Amen. I figured it out, Richard. I figured it out. Amen. It is now time for testimony. Uh, <clears throat> Sister Jayla, uh, while we're giving up testimony, you prepare. As soon as we're done, uh, just before altar call, I want you to come and, and play for us. But I wonder who in here today, who in here today has a testimony to give over to God. Amen. For in a little while, we're going to hear the word of God from the preacher of the hour. But as I say week after week, the true sermon comes from the saints. Hallelujah. The true sermon comes from the vineyard. The true sermon comes from those who are serving in the kingdom of God. So I wonder if I might have a testimony. You have a testimony before you play? Oh, you give it at just before you play, okay? okay. All right, praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm looking to identify others, at least one other. Everyone has a testimony. Here's one testimony. Our son is back with us. Amen. Put your hands together. This was your first year of school, right? You finished th third. Okay, I knew that. Yes. <laughs> Regardless of what year it is, you are back home with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that is our first testimony and praise report. 
on this morning. Jay, let's start making your way towards the front. We have, uh, we have a church full of shy people this morning. In the name of Jesus, those up. I know I can count on my Alva. My Alva will never let me down, mother. If no one else will say a mumbling word, Sister Alva will. Amen. Amen. I'm going to keep it brief, but I just thank and praise the Lord for us having another opportunity to be in the house of worship on today. Amen. I thank and praise God. got a message from my God brother, uh, Pastor Brian in, in uh, Mississippi. He walked the stage. He got his degree in uh, criminal justice. Give the Lord a praise for that. It's, it's, I, I love it. It's an awesome uh, testimony when you can go send your kids to school and all that. And while you're doing all that, you can go get yours. So I just, it was something great for him because he, he stopped, had a family, and went back. So we just praise and thank God for, uh, for my brother Brian. It was for him. To, I'm praising the Lord for somebody else. Amen. Praise God in the name of Jesus. All right. We thank God for our testimonies. In the name, we now have little Jayla. I fell in love with Jayla from the first day I arrived, amen. Isn't she cute? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Jayla, this, this mic is hot. It's ready. So uh, you can either start with song or a story or a story and a song. The floor is yours. Does anybody know the song Fair Jacques? Like from Tom and Jerry? Everybody should know this song, Twinkle Twinkle. <laughs> Put your hands together for our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Great job, Jayla. Great job, Jayla. Just prior to us opening the altar for prayer. You could tell that Jayla practices and practices every day. Amen. As uh, many of us know who have played instruments in our lifetime, uh, and even Brother Nicholas and Roman, I've said it before, you have to practice every day. Whatever your craft is, whatever your gifting is from God, you have to practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect, Jayla. I could tell you practice. And that was awesome. Let's clap it out. Amen. The altar is now open. My brothers and sisters, there are many people that we need to intercede on behalf of. When we open the altar for prayer, it is not just for show. It is not just so everyone could see you pray. 
but we honestly and earnestly have systems, situations, and people that we need to be praying for right now. There is no greater prayer position other than prostrate, other than being on your knees in reverence for the Lord. Whether you are at the altar or if you are at your seat, begin to pray and do not stop on behalf of those who are in need of prayer. You don't have to look far to think about and know who is in need of prayer. We know that we need prayer, but what would it look like for us to pray on behalf of others? We have friends, we have co-workers, we have associates, we have family members who desperately need us to pray. We even have individuals over in other countries all across this globe that are in need of our prayer. Do you realize the power of intercession? Do you realize that God has given us the authority to call on the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus to intercede? Do you know what it means to intercede? To pray a prayer of intercession means that you are calling on the power of the Holy Ghost oh to come and indwell within that person you are calling on the Holy Ghost to come and rest rule and abide you are calling on the Holy Spirit to come in and take over that situation when you pray a prayer of intercession in the name of Jesus, you are calling on the mighty trinity to come and to bear witness. You are calling on the name of Jesus to come and fight the battle. You are calling on God the Father to come and be with you and your family when you pray a prayer of intercession you are asking the holy ghost to come and change that situation holy spirit come and be a relief holy spirit come and deliver an answer holy spirit come and Give us peace. Holy Spirit, come and move in a mighty way. Holy Spirit, come and change this situation. Holy Spirit, come and deliver us. Holy Spirit, come and heal us. Holy Spirit, come and love us. Holy Spirit, come and enfold us. Holy Spirit, Come and care for us. Holy Spirit, come and deliver me. For I find myself in a precarious situation. I find myself in a situation where I don't have an answer. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Because, Lord, I've come to learn I cannot apply a human solution to a spiritual problem. Holy Spirit, 
come right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and intercede right now. Oh, whatever the name is, whatever the friend is, whoever the family member is, in the name of Jesus, come right now and deliver as only you know how to do. Lord, we love you. Oh, God, we honor you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. In the name of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, let us all say amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We can clap that out. My brothers and sisters, just prior to receiving the Voices of Praise Choir, allow me to briefly present to some and introduce to others the speaker of the hour. She is now officially a daughter of New Hope. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It matters not what bush she came from. You do know the Lord will give you a ram in the bush. I care no longer what bush she came from. But don't you know that that bush was burning? Don't you know that that bush was provided for us? Because just when New Hope needed a ram in the bush, all he delivered, he delivered to us a great woman of God. My brothers and sisters, her life and her work speak for themselves. I did not ask her for a bio, nor did she offer one, because she is simply a child of God and a daughter of the kingdom. My brothers and sisters, soon after the choir makes their last sermonic selection and offering unto the Lord. Won't you begin now by praising God for our very own Reverend Norma Lee Gallimore in the name of Jesus.
wonderful thing. Yes. It is a blessed thing yes. to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know how people do it. Yeah. I don't know how people live without Jesus. Come on. I don't know how people do it. Yeah. It is a good thing yeah. to serve the Lord. Yeah. It is a wonderful thing Hallelujah. to have a church family, to have a church home, yeah. to worship and praise the Lord on a Sunday morning, on a Wednesday night, on a Thursday, on a first, second Friday. And every time we have time to praise the Lord and to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When Pastor read the scripture this morning, I tell you, that could just be mine for today. I could just listen to the reading of that scripture and go home. But God has a word for us this afternoon. And God has caused me to stand in the gap. Hallelujah, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring ourselves and we lay ourselves at the altar today. We lay ourselves, God, and we say whatever it is that you wish us to do, do, Lord. Do that which you will with us, Lord. God, for those of us who need a stirring in our spirits, use your word to stir us, Lord. For those of us who are in need of a healing today in our spirits, God, I pray that you'll use your words to heal us, Lord. For those of us who are disillusioned, God, by the things that are around us, God, by the darkness, God, by the debt and the seeming destruction of this world, God, I pray that you will use your words to stir us again, Lord. For those of us who just needs to be closer drawn to you today, Lord, I pray that you will use your words to draw us closer to you, Lord. For those of us, God, who doesn't understand what it means to cry, Abba, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit, Lord, 
will unleash your presence in this, your temple, God. And your Holy Spirit will grab a hold of us, Lord. And your Holy Spirit will speak to us, Lord, and give us that holy boldness, Lord, that we can come into your presence boldly and cry, Abba, Father. God, your word said, whatever we ask, believing in your name, Lord, it is done. I am but a vessel, Lord, and I totally avail myself to you, God, so that you can speak through me, Lord, to your people. Speak, God, as you've never spoken before. Minister as you've never ministered before, Lord. All these things I ask, God, as I humble myself in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Today is Missionary Sunday, yeah. but today is also Women's Sunday. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to say... A blessed Women's Day to my sisters. God bless you. And God has a word for every one of us today. Forgive me if I lean towards missionaries today. Because the topic that the Lord gave me and, you know, I'm a crier. I cry. I cry at funerals. I cry at weddings. And I cry when I bring the word of God because... I realized that had it not been for God and his grace, yeah. I would not be here today. Yeah. And it is truly a privilege for pastor to allow me to stand in his pulpit. I just want to thank God for my pastor, my pastor, Reverend Burke, such a man of God, such a man with a vision, and such a man that is open to women and the ministry of women in this church. New Hope Women, we are blessed. Not all men see us as being worthwhile to stand in the pulpit or to minister in the church. We want to give a hand for Pastor Burke. <laughs> Today the Lord would have me bring this topic. The Christian's response to missions. I want to thank God today for the missionaries in New Hope. The women, and I don't know if they're men, who has availed themselves to the mission. But I believe today that as Christians, we're all missionaries. And we have a responsibility to bring the mission of God to the world. We have a responsibility as Christians to tell others about who Jesus is. We have a responsibility as Christians to be living examples of who Jesus is, first of all, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, and wherever we go. And for those who God has blessed with a desire to go abroad, we have a responsibility as Christians to missions. None of us have an excuse. And I'm going to show you today from um, Haggai chapter 1, from the first one chapter 15, that we all have a responsibility to do the work of God. We all have a responsibility to build the kingdom of God. We are without excuse today. Boys, girls, you have a responsibility. For those who are going off to college this year, you have a responsibility to bring God to your campuses. Those of you who are going to high schools for the first time, you have a responsibility to bring Christ to the high school. Those of you who are going to middle school, you have a responsibility to bring Christ to your school. For those who are going to kindergarten, you have a responsibility to bring Christ to your school. As Christians, we have a responsibility to bring Christ to this nation. Therefore, we are all missionaries. We are all missionaries. Hallelujah. Haggai chapter 1, 
reading from verse 1 to 15. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, governor of Judea, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you yourselves to dwell in your sealed houses while this house light waste. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have sown much and brought in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but are not filled with drink. He clothe you, but there is none warm. He that he earneth wages, earneth wages for a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Grouped together, go up to the hill country and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye look for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought in your home, it did not blow away. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of my house that light waste, while ye run every man to his own house. Therefore over you, over you the heavens have kept back, so that there is no dew, and the earth hath kept back her produce. And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the wine, and upon the oil, and upon the, that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the land. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, hearken unto the voice of the Lord their God, and unto the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the, Lord, the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of the Rubabel, the son of Sheltiel, the governor of Judea, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. In the fourth and twentieth day, the month, in the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. We know little of Haggai. A part that he was mentioned in Ezra chapter 6, verse 15, and Ezra 5, 1 and 2. But what was happening at this time in Judea was that a remnant of the people came back. And they came back and they thought about building the temple. And the temple was significant to the children of Israel because the temple was where God's spirit dwelt. Yes. And they started building the temple and they met several adversaries in the process. And so after a while they got discouraged and they thought about doing their own thing, taking care of their own needs, building their own houses, farming their own land, storing up their own wealth, taking care of their own families. They became satisfied with the altar that was built. But here was God's temple that was laid waste. The stones were scattered and the ground was hard. And every person was satisfied with just going and, and praising God with a little t altar that was there and offering sacrifices that was just enough. And God said, I am not happy. I am not happy, says God. Because my temple, where my spirit dwells, laid waste. While you build your beautiful houses. While you build your beautiful bank accounts. While you send your children off to college. 
And while you think about the next car that you want to own, yeah. and while you think about moving out of this community to that community, yeah. God is saying, I'm not pleased. Because my temple is laid waste. The place where my spirit dwells is laid waste. And God said, I want you to look back at what happened. First, you were a people who did not recognize that I was Jehovah, the Almighty, the beginning and the end. And because of your ways, Israel, you were led into captivity. And now you are back. What is your attitude going to be? I want you to check yourself and look back. I want to see, I want you to see how your ways in the past have led you to a place of condemnation, a place of exile. A place where you were considered not a people. The songwriter said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Mm. Israel, who was God's chosen people, they were like nothing in the strange land. The God who was their God, the God who selected, the God who led them out of Israel. This great nation is now reduced to a mere remnant because they have chosen to put God on the back burner while everything else take precedence. Mm. Mm. And God is saying, I'm chastising you because one, you say the time is not yet come for my temple to be rebuilt. But God is saying, it's not your timing. It's my timing. And the time is now. Yeah. The time for missionary work yeah. is now. Yeah. The time to go out and tell the world about Jesus is now. Yeah. The time to be a living testimony of what God is, is now. Yeah. It is while you're in middle school. It is while you're in kindergarten. It is while you're in college. It is while you're at work. Yeah. It is while you're in your communities. Yeah. The time to let the world know that Jesus is King and Lord is now. Right. They're saying the time is not now. Like those of us who say, you know, I want to accept the Lord, but I have to wait. You know, I'm not married. I, I want to have a girlfriend. I want to have a boyfriend. You know, there's some things that I want to get out of the way. You know, I want to make sure that when I get saved, you know, there's other people out there, they, they do it and they turn back. I don't want to be like that. I've heard that so many times. I don't want to be like the other person who gets saved and then turn back. I want to tell you something. The time is now. The time is today. The time is this hour. The time is now for those young people who say, but Christianity is no fun. Letting people know they'll think I am just soft if I let them know that I'm a Christian. I want you to know that you're the biggest man. You're the biggest woman when you have Jesus. You are not soft when you walk with Jesus. It is Jesus Christ, the creator of this world. It is he who created the world. It is God who created you. He formed you. He formed you and he breathes life into you. Yeah. You are royalty. He is the king of kings and the lords of lords. You are royalty. Yeah. So when you walk up in that college campus and they say you're a softy, tell them no. I'm here in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift heart, your hearts get open and let the king of glory come in. Yeah. When you walk up into that college and they say, when they want to party and drink and take drugs and do whatever and get involved into things that are not godly and they say, how come you don't want to participate in this? Tell them, I am royalty. Yeah. I am royalty. Yeah. I am royalty. Hallelujah. When you go to school and they say that you're a softy, that you're nobody, tell them I am royalty. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to cheat on my exam. I am royalty. I have a God who answers prayer and all I have to do is pray all I have to do is pray when you walk into your workplace 
and they treat you like crap. Mm. They treat you bad. Yeah. They say, oh, she's different. Mm. Oh, at my workplace, oh, they're always laughing and sad. They say, I act like a white girl. You know, I don't know what that means. But you know what? I said to them, you know what? I know I'm different yeah. because I'm saved. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Sister Renee. When the enemy comes upon you, like a flood, the Holy Spirit is going to lift up a standard against the enemy. And he's going to wash, wash the enemy away. You know what? They see something in you. They know that you're different and they want to ride you. But tell Satan, you've got a back of a duck because God has given you the back of a duck. And when the devil turns his water, you just stand up and let it roll off because your God has got your back. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they said the time has not yet come for us to build God's temple. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The time is now. The time is now. Yeah. Yes, they said, okay. Yeah, the time has not yet come. Because why would God want us to build a temple in such times of adversary? Right. He said, look on the things that are happening. Right. The land is desolate after 70 years. Yeah. Would our God want us to work that hard? Yeah. They said, we don't have enough money. So we can't build. That's a good reason. That's a good reason why God said it's not time to build. Because if God wanted us to build, then he would have given us the resources. They said, look how my son Balot came with all his men. We tried hard. We tried hard. We tried hard. It's a little small remnant of us. Why God, God maybe wants us to have some more, get some wealth and, and get bigger in size so we can go against them. These are all the excuses. Yeah. And they remembered easier days in Babylon. <laughs> Let's think about what is happening in our society today. Yeah. Those of us who invested in the stock market, mm -hmm. we have seen that crash. Yeah. What I'm getting for a salary today is much less than what I was getting 10 years ago. Do you think God would want me to be a missionary? There are those of us who are battling health issues. Do you think that God would want you to go out there and tell somebody about him? There are those who are unemployed. Do you think that God would want you to go there? I want to say to all of us today, whatever the situation is. Yeah. Whatever the devil has brought your way, yeah. whatever God has allowed to happen yeah. in your life, you, we are still responsible for telling the world about Jesus. Yeah. No matter what the circumstances are, be that my husband left me eight months ago, God still wants me Hello. to tell the world that Jesus loves me. Be that you might be unemployed, God still wants you to raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. It could have been otherwise. The time to build is now. Don't allow the situations around you. Evanston is falling apart. The time to tell somebody about Jesus is now. Hallelujah. I hear gunshots in the back of my backyard. Yeah. When I bought my house, Evanston, gray was this beautiful little street with trees lining it. Now there's murder, there's gunshots. The police are saying to us the kids should not play on the front. Isn't it time then church for us to bring the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Isn't it time, church, for us to be vigilant about who we are as Christians? Yeah. We cannot afford to play the fool anymore. We cannot afford to shut our mouths and yeah. stand like soldiers who are wounded. Yeah. We need to get up. It's time to get up. Yeah. It's time to move. Yeah. It's time to move. Yeah. We have to get up. We have to move. The time is now. God is saying to us, we are small here at New Hope. 
But you know, we have God's Holy Spirit. Amen. We have God's Holy Spirit. Yeah. We have the Word of God. We have the truth. And we have God's Holy Spirit living within us. Yeah. Let us not be silent. Let us not be silent. Yeah. I'm challenging every person yeah. to be an ambassador. I'm challenging every boy, every girl here. I'm challenging every woman, every man. I'm challenging me as a minister. I'm challenging our pastor. Let us take the banner of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let us hold it high. Yeah. Let us march and let the world know yeah. that the time is now. Yeah. Jesus is at hand. Amen. The coming of God's kingdom is here. Amen. And that there is freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that we need to see one young man walked in this church. Yeah. We need to stay prayed up. We need to stay prayed up. We yeah. need to walk around our church. We yeah. need to be praying around our church. Yeah. We need to be praying in our community. We yeah. need to be praying. Praying so that we don't... When people will start coming in this church to say that I want to know Jesus. Yeah. I want to know Jesus. I'm, I'm challenging every one of us. In Sunday school we learned this morning, but whatever goes in. And I was challenged by this word, and I couldn't stop crying. I was challenged by this word to make a difference. I'm going to challenge us this week and every day after this to make sure that we're eating the word of God. We need to eat it for breakfast. We need to eat it for a snack. We need to eat it for lunch. We need to eat it for dinner. We need to eat it for a night snack. And then we need to eat it when the Lord wakes us up. You know, we need to eat the word of God so that whatever is coming out of us is a word and life. So that we can be filled to the overflowing. So that we can begin to affect yeah. our communities. Hallelujah. We can begin to affect those around us. Yeah. Let us start eating the word of God. No. I want somebody, I'm willing to give my number. Call me in the morning. Say, what are you reading? Let us read the word of God. Yeah. Five o'clock, wake me up. Let us eat the word of God. Yeah. I want us to start eating the word of God. So that whatever goes in us yeah. will fill us up to the overflowing. Yeah. So that we will begin to be effective yeah. ministers for Jesus Christ. I want to challenge us today. Missionaries, you're doing a great job. And we're joining you because we're all missionaries. No longer will we allow our few sisters and brothers in this church to bear the name. But we are going to take the mantle with those who have identified themselves as missionaries. And we are going to accept the call this morning. Pastor, the Lord is just leading me for you to just pray of us and just to commission us. In the name of Jesus as we go forward as missionaries, as missionaries for Christ. Thank you. Oh, what a mighty word. Oh, what a mighty word. And as Nor Reverend Norma Lee Gallimore suggested, yes, just after the invitation, we will have a commissioning. Amen. But the doors of the church are open. Stand to your feet at this time. Stand to your feet at this time in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Jesus is available. Jesus is available to you and to me. As the preacher said, the time is now. The time is now. So come. Come if you will. Oh, come to Jesus. Oh, there might be someone present today who's looking for a church family. There might be someone today who's looking for a church home. There might be somebody here today that says, I, I need somebody to walk with me. I need somebody to talk with me. I need somebody to hold my hand. I need somebody to, to be with. 
For this is the day. This is the day. Don't let another moment go by without giving your life to Christ. Or there might be someone who wants to rededicate on today. Or you've been with the Lord all your life. But yet, you are being compelled and convicted to come into further relationship with the Lord. All the time is now. Will you come? Is there one? Is there one on today? In the name of Jesus. Oh, come. You are not alone. We will walk with you. We will be with you. This is your new home. In the name of Jesus. There might be somebody who's wrestling with the call. Oh, we never take for granted. We never take these moments lightly. And somebody might be called to preach. Young or old, it doesn't matter. Today is the day. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. our missionaries but I don't want to limit anybody to the title of a quote unquote official missionary if you were listening to the preacher if you were listening to Reverend Gallimore in essence she said that we all are missionaries So therefore, from where you are, from where you are, lift up your hand to God. <coughs> Holy Spirit, come right now. Holy Spirit, we were reminded on this morning that we are all missionaries. Oh, it doesn't matter if we wear right, white, black, yellow, or purple. We are all missionaries. For the word of God asks us to go forth and to speak his name. And he shall draw all men unto thee. For it is the great commission to go out and spread the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. Oh, the preacher reminded us there is much work to be done. Therefore, by the power vested in me, by the authority of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, I commission each and every one of us. I commission each and every man, woman, and child who are present on today. Whether you are going to kindergarten or whether you're going on for your PhD, oh, there is work that must be done. There is food that needs to be eaten. There is the word of God that must be ingested morning, noon, and night. For we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to go out and share the good news. Oh, my brothers and sisters, oh, please consider yourself commissioned right now. Please know that you have been sanctified. Please know that you have been anointed. Please know that you have been chosen. Please know that you are of a royal priesthood. 
Oh, it is your job. It is my job. It is our job to be the difference we want to see in our community. To be the difference we want to see in our home. To be the difference we want to see on our job. To be the difference we want to see in our school. Do not take this commission for granted. For God has called us to a greater good. God has called us to help each and every one of us. God has called us out of our homes and out of our lonely places to come and help each other in the name of Jesus. God has called us to go out into the highways and into the hedges and to spread the good news. God has called us to go and share love with somebody that needs to be loved. And go and share care with somebody that needs to be cared for. But whatever you do, whatever you do, I commission you now to go out in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of of the Holy Ghost. Oh, let the church say amen. Amen. And hallelujah. In the name. Hallelujah. In the name. Yes. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. Yes, Lord. messenger. Didn't she preach? Didn't she preach? Oh, you can do better than that. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Reverend. Reverend Gallimore brought the fire. Oh, and she reminded us of many things. Reverend, I want you to see I wrote a full page of notes. Amen. I'm a good student of the word. We got enough time for me to remind you of some of her bullet points. She says, we have responsibilities as Christians to mission. Whether you're in college, high school, middle school, or kindergarten, we are all missionaries. At one point she said, in Haggai, the remnant came back. But all they were doing was taking care of themselves. God wasn't happy. God said, I am Jehovah and to watch your ways. And I love when she said, the, the, the songwriter said, you're singing 
A song to God in a strange land. I'm not trying to re-preach her sermon. I'm just happy and excited because she hit on some good points. She said we put God on the back burner. But yet the time is now. She also said don't get saved and then turn back. And I love this. She drove this point home. You are not soft. You are not soft. But you are of royalty. She also said you have the back of a duck. Am I right about it? Just let it roll off. I like that. She's going to hear me steal that one day. You have the back of a duck. Just let it roll off. So many more things she said, but in conclusion, she said, go out and make a difference. And lastly, she said, let us eat the word of God daily, even as a snack. I love that. Suzanne knows I love food metaphors in the name of Jesus. But weren't you blessed on today? Weren't you blessed on today in the name of Jesus? What an awesome Women's Day. What an awesome missionary day. What an awesome day in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Just prior to final announcements, I want you to know that the blessings will continue. The Bradley family being led today by Bobby, Brother Bobby Brantley, Bobby B, I call him, amen. amen. Out of the kindness of his heart, amen, we can clap that out, yes. That's his proud niece clapping there, yes. Jayla loves Uncle Bobby, amen. But Uncle Bobby, he called me this morning and then Vicky just stuck her head in the door and he wanted to make sure everybody knew that there is a prepared brunch for everyone present in the back. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? In the name of Jesus. I'm going to be transparent. Bobby called me this morning. He said, Pastor, I should have called you prior. But, uh, you know, if I'm going to be transparent, I said, well, Bobby, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> And that's what he said, Ella. He said it's going to cost absolutely nothing. It is F-R-E-E -E free. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, you can clap that out. You can clap that out. This is the Brantley family giving back to the kingdom of God. Giving back to their church. Doing the work of the missionary. Because the time is now. So we thank God for each and every Brantley Amen. present and for Bobby in particular in the name of Jesus. Amen. What an awesome, awesome day. <clears throat> there are, I cannot think of any pressing <coughs> announcements, Suzanne, unless you, you appear to have some. Let us give our attention to Sister Suzanne Smith at this time. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Interdenominational Missionary of Evanston and the North Shore are celebrating the 81st anniversary on June 26, 2014 at Bethel AME Church. The speaker to be announced later. Our church has 15, 15 offering envelopes and we are asking for $10 per envelope or more depending on what the Lord is directing you to do. Amen. Please see Sister Mary Ann Hannon for your envelope and also or Sister Esther Burrs. We would also like a picture of all the missionaries with our pastor for the souvenir booklet for the 81st anniversary. Um, reminder, please join the Voices of Praise as we fellowship with New Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church this afternoon at 4 p.m. as they celebrate their 40th choir anniversary at 2, uh, 251 Asbury Street in Evanston. And uh, for those of you who have received this flyer, I can testify that this is an experience you will never forget. If you can make it to 
the Faith Temple Church of God in Christ, Voices of Faith Youth Annual Pre-Memorial Day Late Night Musical. It's kind of late, but it is worth it. We have been several times each year, and it is awesome. And it's also for that wonderful price of free. Uh -huh, yes, we have a theme today. Thank you, Sister Suzanne. Amen. <clears throat> we all love a free party in the name of Jesus. Well, this, uh, this is the unofficial end of our Women's Month recognition, but we're going to continue to recognize women all month. And we only have one more week, one more Sunday left in the month of May. Uh, next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. Am I right about it? Amen. So uh, we normally recognize, uh, you know, veterans and those veterans who we've lost. So might we recognize uh, at that time all of our female veterans and soldiers who have served this country and served them well in the name of Jesus. Uh, there was mention of a picture. So I'm going to request this. I know this is going to be a challenge, but I want to do this immediately. Everybody is in blue and white today or some form of white. Uh, uh, if you have white or blue on today, you're a missionary. Amen. I want this picture to be nice and pretty and so everybody can see uh, all the hard work we're doing. If you have white on, come and take this picture, man, woman, or child. And uh, at the doxology benediction, I'm not going to walk to the back. I'm going to stand right here. And I want all of you, Vicki, I want you too. I want everybody to come surround me and take the picture immediately. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for that. Amen. Maybe somebody can help. Renee, uh, to get uh, uh, Ms. Weldon to the front here. We want her in the front. Uh, uh, and then if I can get some of the men, like Bryant and, uh, and Roman, to come and take the picture. I know Roman's got to go, but we'll have several cameras here. Let's take this photograph, and uh, let's uh, get that done, all right? And then we can go to the back and have nourishment and a good time in the Lord for free. Praise the Lord. Let us stand for our doxology and benediction. Now may the God of peace, the God of grace, be yours as you go throughout this week. Amen. Uh -oh. All right. All, anyone in white, come forward. White or blue, white or blue, come forward. All children, white or blue, yes, 